worldwide mind is an idea. The worldwide mind is a concept. So what I try to do in the book is to talk about the worldwide mind as a common global intelligence. And I mean that in the sense of an intelligence with an intentionality and a consciousness of its own, entirely apart from human intelligence. And what I try to do is get away from the science fiction idea that the internet by itself is going to become intelligent. I think that's an absurd idea. That's like saying that putting a bunch of transistors together will just get you a radio automatically. I don't think that's going to happen. The argument I make is that the worldwide mind is a combination of humans and the internet acting together in concert. That the combination of the two yields a being which is more powerful than either in isolation. And that, I argue, gives you the seed of an intelligence that neither has by itself. And that's what I think of as the worldwide mind. It's very legitimate to worry that the internet is alienating us from each other. You only have to look at figures like the average teenager sends and receives 2,272 texts per month. And some teenagers send 14 or 20,000 texts in a month. So when you look at numbers like that, you really can't avoid the conclusion that they're spending more time looking at the screen than they are looking at people. You know, the argument that I make is that you can't really stop that hunger to be connected. You can't stop that urge to look at the screen. The argument that I make in the book is that you can incorporate that urge and by actually fusing technology with the body to make that connection through technology a physical connection a connection that you make as part of your own internal bodily experience. Here's my own human machine connection. So I've got two cochlear implants. So what I wear in my ear is a processor where sound goes in the microphone, gets processed by a unit here into ones and zeros, and the data is sent to a headpiece, which is really a radio transmitter with a magnet in it. And the magnet will stick to an implant that's in my head and it's sending data through my skin to that implant. And there are electrodes that connect to my auditory nerves that send little pulses of electricity to my auditory nerves that recreate the sensation of hearing for me. So I'm a guy who actually has 32 electrodes and tens of thousands, actually hundreds of thousands of transistors in his head. What I hope you will learn is that there is a new way to think about how technology and human relationships can be brought together. Right now, people think of these domains as mutually exclusive. And what I suggest in the book is that there is a way to put these worlds together by physical integration of humans and machines. Now, I don't claim that this is something that's around the corner. But I do draw from my own personal experience in having a cochlear implant. So it is a daily reality of my life to boot up my ear in the morning by putting on the processor of my cochlear implant and having it activate the computer chips that are in my head. So what I'm really trying to say is that technology can be used to create more humane connections between people.